Right, good morning, everybody. I'm, I'm from the Born Free Foundation, uh, Daniel Turner. I've been working with Born Free for 17 years. Wow. Um, but my background, originally I'm a biologist, um, and I actually started out um, with volunteerism. Um, and I think a lot of my colleagues that work in animal welfare or conservation actually did start out with uh, volunteerism, animal welfare focused or wildlife conservation focused. So if you're thinking about getting into the realm of, of working for an NGO charity in animal welfare conservation, that is a very good inroad. Um, and my particular work was in uh, working for an NGO in India uh, on wildlife trafficking issues. Um, and then another year in uh, deepest, darkest Peru, working in the Amazon rainforest uh, as a guide and researcher. But that was a long time ago. Um, now, uh, working at Born Free, my focus is on tourism, um, as well as uh, other areas of policy. And uh, in that realm, working with a number of tour operators, uh, and in particular, ABTA, um, that uh, you, for Hugh, you just heard um, a, a moments ago. And I know that that's um, for some people working with uh, tour operators, which um, I suppose there is the perception that tour operators often proliferate the problems that we all try to address. Um, actually, that's really not the case because the tour operator is the middleman between the supplier that provides the excursion or the, um, or the experience, and they then join that experience up to the paying customer. So our, our per perception is that if you actually work with the operators themselves and educate and provide best practice guidance and hold hand and lead, and etc., then actually you can address the problems that we all want to uh, to address. So my presentation, I mean, I'm not going to talk about Born Free. We have a stand here, and uh, you're very welcome to come over and chat to myself or my colleague Katie or Will, of course, um, about what we do. Um, and there's a lot of information on the stand. But what I want to talk to you today, actually, is um, about animals and tourism and really kind of step back from the sort of, we've heard a lot about volunteerism, and of course that is a component of this. But I do want to give you a little bit more of a bigger picture as to the kind of activities where animals are involved in tourism um, and what we're doing to try and address the problems. So if you think about, oh, okay, animals in tourism, most people think, okay, I'm going to go to somewhere wild, Africa, Asia, UK, and see animals in the wild. And yes, of course, that is a component of um, animals in tourism. And I want to focus on the elephant. There'll be a lot of lion stuff and, and, and badges and so on, but my, my, my call card is the elephant. But what, the reason I want to focus on one species is I want to show you how just one species can be used in lots of different ways within that tourism experience. <coughs> So there's the viewing in the wild, but there's also the riding of the elephant in order to view other animals in the wild. And yes, elephants have been used for hundreds of years in that capacity, uh, and um, they were largely used um, to view other wildlife because they're actually very agile creatures and can creep up on an animal without startling the animal. Um, and therefore is a very good way of seeing wildlife in the wild. But from an animal welfare perspective, you're, you've got to think about two issues. You've got to think about the animals you're viewing and making sure that you're not startling them and you're, you're keeping your distance and respecting their individual welfare. But you've also got to think about the animal that you're riding and making sure that that practice is not detrimental in any way. Volunteerism, you can go to sanctuaries, and we've heard from the Orangutan Foundation as to the do's and don'ts within that. The, using the term sanctuary, or indeed zoo, or any of those words that we are, are familiar with, you have a perception as to what that might be. Unfortunately, however, 
um, people use those a word like a sanctuary, which generally has a very good feel to it because it tends to suggest rescue, rehabilitation, care. But then, th then that word is used to sort of mask other things that are going on that perhaps are not so great. So the picture up there is from a, a sanctuary or an orphanage in Sri Lanka, which claims it is a sanctuary and an orphan orphanage, but actually when you go there, you find the animals are chained, you find that the animals are, are, are regularly abused with hooks and so on, and they also do things like selling elephants to, to, to um, zoos and, and circuses. So there are things to always be aware of. There's also that hand, getting up close and personal, hands-on, work, which obviously is a wonderful experience, and um, casting my mind back that 20 odd years when I was uh, a student just out of uni and wanting to be involved in things like this, this kind of activity would be amazing. But having been through all the process, working with Born Free, etc., etc., you then find out, okay, this is a category one hazardous animal, highly dangerous, highly unpredictable, do I really want to sit on the elephant and, and uh, wash it? The other thing is that we're used to a highly regulated society. We have chairs at a particular height and all this kind of thing. But in other countries, they don't have those kinds of regulations. So don't just assume because something is available for you to practice with, all risks have been addressed and your welfare is being put up there as a priority. Don't assume that, and this is certainly not the case in this regard. Elephants, as in all wild animals, are used in parades and festivals, and also activities that some may consider as normal and natural, but certainly from, if you know an elephant in this regard, then you'll know that this kind of activity or this kind of activity is completely abnormal to the animal and that that animal would have to go through significant amount of stress uh, to practice that kind of behavior. Zoos as well, um, you'll have those progressive zoos that think about the animal's needs and try and replicate those in, a, in the artificial environment of a zoo. Or as in this case, Barcelona Zoo, where there's no consideration for what an elephant needs in order to have a, a restful, comfortable life. Unfortunately, in tourism, you can also hunt animals, and people spend a lot of money uh, to hunt. Um, as we'll hear later, there is um, the idea that maybe that money goes to communities or to conservation, but really there's no evidence to support that. Um, and also, as a tourist, you may come across um, artifacts and items that you can buy as a souvenir. And just because they're available does not mean that they're ethical. And if you didn't know, if you're buying even a little small bit of ivory that you may think was way back from the mammoth era or whatever, this is the actual result of buying that particular piece of ivory. So that's something to think about when you go into the marketplace. So if you have a look at all the, all the itineraries and excursions that tour operators are offering you as far as your uh, holidays and experiences, there's actually huge numbers of ways you can interact with animals. And what we're not saying is don't do any of them. I mean, there are certainly some on this list that we would seriously recommend that you don't get involved in. But then there are others on this list that if you manage it effectively and well, you will look after the animal's welfare, you will ensure the customer safety, and you will ensure that people can have a wonderful time interacting with animals, but also the animals are not going to have a negative experience because of that activity. And that's what we're trying to do at Born Free. We know also that members of the public are concerned about seeing animals in activities that are exploitary or detrimental, where animals are abused. And we receive thousands of reports, um, well, on a yearly basis. And that information is really useful to us because, in fact, the travelers become our eyes and ears as to what's going on in the world. 
And um, as far as the kind of activities that we learn about, it's the poor conditions in zoos, but it's also those hands-on activities that we uh, saw previously, the use of animals as photo props or in, in selfie situations, and animals being required to perform unnatural behaviors, and they're having to be trained to do that, uh, and those practices are, are largely um, uh, abusive. And if you look at the data, as far as uh, any opinion polls that are undertaken, um, looking at large numbers of people and their attitudes, we can generally see that people, if they experience something bad on holiday, it actually has a negative impact on their, on their experience and with the operator that they're traveling with, and that largely people want to imp uh, report these activities but they don't necessarily know who to report to. So these are all inf this is all information that we um, act upon. And from the travel companies themselves, they know that if they put a foot wrong in this, if they start promoting something that they know is unethical or detrimental to animal welfare, there are repercussions to their reputation. And this is one of the key um, leverage that we, let, we have in working with the travel industry. And um, for those industry members that kind of ignore that issue, uh, this is a, a very good way of bringing them on board. Uh, and also to recognize those that are uh, actually doing a lot to address negative activities. So Born Free has been working with the travel industry since 2004. And I would like to say that we're one of the pioneering um, charities or NGOs that have been encouraging the travel industry as a whole, the individual companies you see, some of which listed there, but um, ABTA and, uh, and other uh, coalitions of tour operators, to take that right path, understand the issues, and with that information, making informed decisions to do the right thing. But the bottom line in doing the right thing is that you have to understand the animal. And we know there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of different species, and they all have different needs. There's some basic requirements. Um, we know those as the five freedoms and so on, uh, where food and water, suitable environment, protection from fear and distress. And you can generally have some basic standards in there to to give that basic protection. But ultimately, elephants in this regard are social species and they live in a social structure and they also walk hundreds of kilometers. So how are you going to replicate that in an artificial captive environment? Well, you're gonna have a, it's a hard task, but you can improve that space and ensure that those animals that are in that captive environment are in the best, best conditions that is possible within that environment. And that's what we're trying to do through a series of understanding what animal welfare is, relaying that to the industry and encouraging them through uh, tools and guidance and so on to um, ensure that their practices are as ethical and responsible as possible. So you can see up here the, the black text is law, policy, that you can find in UK law, but European law and even international law that recognizes that all animals, where we're talking elephants or an elephant shrew, have needs. They can experience pain, suffering, and distress. But what we need to do is to take that sort of boring text and put it into something that is a little bit more understandable from an industry, travel industry perspective, so the text in blue is what we worked out with ABTA. And through the guidance documents that Hugh has already introduced, uh, incorporate that knowledge into a set of minimum requirements. And as you can see here, some best practice guidance. And what we do with those, or what um, the tour operators do with those, is require the suppliers, the excursion providers, the animal attractions, to meet those standards 
to ensure that the animals within those practices, whether it's volunteerism or a zoo or a wildlife viewing um, excursion, meet a set of minimum requirements and hopefully aspire to meeting those best practice that you see on the screen here. If they don't, and the stick, I mean obviously this is the carrot, but the stick is if they don't, then the operators will consider not selling tickets to or promoting those activities. So that's the incentive for the supplier to comply with these requirements. So what are, what's Born Free doing, as well as working with the tour operators, it's all about providing information. Um, this is not about telling people what to do, and that's certainly not what we're here to do to do today or what I'm what I work on it's about giving you information and then you can provide you, you can take that information and make an informed decision as to the kind of uh, activities that you do and as we said on volunteerism here today is to do your research but to recognize that you're not alone you don't have to spend hours on the internet or uh, reading through books and so on, or contacting uh, organizations like ourselves. You can go to various um, uh, information online where it's all consolidated. And this is something that we are now working to. Um, Animal Footprint is going to be launched in about a month's time, so it's not, you can't find it right now. Um, but what I can tell you is that it will have information on all kinds of activities, whether it's elephants or anything else involved in tourism practices. It will provide you with an insight of the concerns that we have, as Born Free is concerned, but it will also have a guidance as to what APTA thinks, as far as the industry is concerned, and all information that you're ever likely to want to know about those kind of activities. It will also list um, responsible tour operators as well as volunteerism operators. So all that information is in one place and that will make your lives so much easier so you're not having to spend those hours uh, and, and ensure that you have a responsible and enjoyable uh, volunteerism experience. So when you do travel, whether you're traveling as a tourist, a traveler, or whether, you're, whether you are traveling as a volunteerism or volunteerist, if that's a word, please make sure you look out for animals. Uh, and in, whether it's wild animals in the wild or wild animals in captivity or domestic animals such as horses or donkeys or even dogs and cats in resort, um, there are organizations like the Born Free Foundation who can address those concerns, but we're not able to address those concerns unless we know about them. So please do visit that Animal Footprint website or even the Born Free Foundation website, and that is the way to report those problem uh, issues. So thank you very much for at your attention. Nice to meet you. Bye-bye.